So let's see, uh, see kind of some of the th things that we've done in chapter 7 now. So from section 1, we saw problems like this. These, uh, this problem is actually like problems we had in, um, oh, what chapter would that have been? Maybe chapter 6 as well in our last test. And now we really have two different ways to approach this. We could approach this from an identity perspective, or we could approach it from using triangles uh, like we did late in Chapter 7. So I'm going to work it both ways, and you can work it however you want to on the test. If I was using a, an identity approach, then if I was looking for something to relate sine with cosine, I know that sine squared s is equal to 1 minus cosine squared s. So I could substitute into that and solve and figure out what the sine is uh, from the fact that we're in quadrant 1. So sine squared s would equal 1 minus and 3 fourths squared would be 9 sixteenths. which is 7 sixteenths. So sine of s would be plus or minus the square root of 7 sixteenths, or the square root of 7 over 4, but in quadrant 1, Sine is positive, so it would be positive the square root of 7 over 4. What do you think of that, Natalie? Easy, moderate, or hard? Easy. You think that's easy, okay. If you were looking at this problem from a triangle perspective, cosine of s being equal to 3 fourths, that's positive, so that puts us in the first quadrant. And that means adjacent over hypotenuse would make a ratio of 3 to 4. So if here's theta, here's adjacent, and there's hypotenuse. So I would need the y over here, which would have to be positive because again it's in the first quadrant. So 3 squared plus y squared would equal 4 squared, or 16. So 9 plus y squared would equal 16. So y squared would equal 7. And again, we're in the first quadrant. So y would be positive the square root of 7. So then sine of theta would be square root of 7 over 4. What do you like better, uh, Natalie? You like uh, identities or do you like triangles better? Identities. You like identities better. Okay. In section two, we verified identities. I put three of them over here. Oh boy, it's going to. Well, I don't like what's going on there, so I'm just going to go down here and recopy those problems. So what was it 35 said? It has cotangent theta over cosecant theta is equal to cosine theta. We're supposed to verify that. Not on the screen. Now I'm on the screen. There we go. Uh, which side do you want to start with, Natalie? Uh, well, what are you going to do with it? Okay. Then what happens? Okay. 
And then what happens? And we are finished. Well, those that one kind of seems like child play now, doesn't it? Yeah. Hmm. And then we had 38 that we were taking a look at, or I, I've got it labeled 38. I think it's probably 38 out of the section, section two, out of the homework. Tangent squared alpha plus one over secant alpha is equal to secant alpha. Okay, you're, we're going to let you talk us through this one again, um, Natalie. Oh, that is very nice. You recognize the Pythagorean identity. Tangent squared plus one is secant squared. And then one of the secants is going to cancel with the secant on bottom when we're finished. That problem can be done by converting tangent and secant into sines and cosines, but it's way longer. So you, cho you chose the much quicker of the two. Okay, this last one's number 52. I'm not sure we didn't do this one. I'm not sure you didn't ask about this one. Am I thinking right or not? 1 over secant alpha minus tangent alpha is equal to secant alpha plus tangent alpha. So again, which side would you prefer to start on? And what do you want to do over there? Okay. So it'd be one over one over cosine alpha plus sine alpha over cosine alpha. Oh, thank you. I put plus. There we go. All right, so we have now, uh, if we look at the bottom, we've already got common denominators. So we'd have one over one minus sine alpha over cosine alpha. Now what are you thinking? Um, and, or what, or by the, the okay, so if one times cosine alpha over one minus sine alpha, which would be cosine alpha over one minus sine alpha, and I think I cut you off there. Are you in agreement with that? Yeah, and then one, oh, All right, sines and cosines over here would be 1 over cosine plus sine over cosine, which would give me 1 plus sine over cosine. So we're not there yet. Now what are you thinking as far as trying to get a cosine over 1 minus sine to be 1 plus sine over cosine? Let's think about our list. Look for Pythagorean identities. We did that already. Number two, 
put everything in terms of sines and cosines. We did that already. It's actually number three. The number four thing that we had on our list was multiply by the conjugate. <clears throat> and the fifth thing we had on our list was factor. So, do you see any potential for multiplying by the conjugate anywhere here? Yep, I think that would do it. I think that's going to work for us. Let's see. So if we multiply 1 minus sine alpha by 1 plus sine alpha, and i got to do it in the numerator as well, that's sine alpha up there. It just doesn't look like it. Then remember, when you multiply 1 minus sine times 1 plus sine, you get cosine squared alpha. If we multiply it out, we end up with 1 minus sine squared alpha, with it, which equals cosine squared alpha. So what I've got now is cosine alpha times 1 plus sine alpha over cosine squared alpha. And now cosine alpha will cancel one of those. And I think this is what we had on the right side. Wasn't it 1 plus sine alpha over cosine alpha? So we're finished. So here's your little strategy. If you get to a point where you're stuck, think, think through that list again, and sometimes that'll unstuck you. And, and that five-pronged list we had was start with the most complicated side, Look for Pythagorean identities. Put everything in terms of sines and cosines. Multiply by the conjugate and factor. And usually by the time you get through all those, uh, you'll have something. Okay, so that's a little rundown on section two. Section three was about the sum and difference identities. Hmm. And I will tell you that the sum and difference identities are usually, uh, I usually give those to you on this exam. So, just to remind you, however, they went like this. Cosine of alpha plus beta, put plus minus, plus minus beta, was cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus plus, the sine switch there, sine alpha, sine beta, And sine of alpha plus minus beta was equal to sine alpha cosine beta plus minus sine beta cosine alpha. And we also had the one for tangent. Tangent of alpha plus or minus beta was equal to... So it went tangent alpha plus minus tangent beta over 1 minus plus tangent alpha tangent beta. Okay, so looking at a problem or two related to that, 
Um, the problem on your sheet says find the exact value of the cosine of 45 or 75 degrees, which we can't do on our calculator. It's only going to give us a decimal. So let's build 75 out of two angles on the unit circle. The two most obvious choices are 45 and 30 in this case, although it's not our only choices. We can probably get some other things to subtract to 75 if we stopped and thought about it long enough. So now let's apply the sum identity for cosine. Cosine of the first, cosine of the second. And remember the sign always switches in the sum identity for cosine. So sine of the first, sine of the second. And then we'll just figure out what all that jazz is equal to. So Natalie, what's cosine of 45? What's cosine at 30? What's sine at 45? What's sine at 30? So we end up with the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 over 4. Does that seem easy, moderate, or hard to you? Easy. The next one's just same idea except it's in radians. We have sine of 5 pi over 12. So we got to try to build that. If we try pi over 12 plus 4 pi over 12, pi over 12 is not on the unit circle. If we try 2 pi over 12 plus 3 pi over 12, we should be in pretty good shape because 2 pi over 12 is pi over 6, that's on the unit circle, and 3 pi over 12 is pi over 4, that's on the unit circle. So we could do that problem and apply the identity for sine, the sum identity. Which goes sine of the first, cosine of the second, and here the middle sign stays the same, and then cos, uh, sine of the second, sine pi over 4, cosine of the first, cosine pi over 6. Okay, Natalie, what is sine at pi over 6? Are you sure? Okay, it's a half. It's cosine at pi over 4. Okay, what's sine at pi over 4? What's well, cosine at pi over 6? Okay. So we appear to have the square root of 2 plus the square root of 6 all over 4. Okay, so you could expect to see something like that on your test. And then there's that other problem sitting down there that says the tangent 
of 60 plus theta. And I'm going to use a different color to keep it shook up here. And the direction say right in terms of theta. So let's apply the sum identity for tangent and see where we end up. And I'm going to let you work your step out in front of me and then I'll catch up to you. So tangent is 60 plus theta is tangent 60 plus tangent theta over 1 minus tangent 60 tangent theta. So I had to figure out what tangent at 60 was. At 60 degrees, according to our half, root 3 over 2. So tangent takes the y and puts it over the x. So root 3 over 2 over half, in which case the 2's would cancel and give me just root 3. So that gives me root 3 plus tangent theta out of the numerator and 1 minus root 3 tangent theta in the denominator. Is this the point at which you got stuck? Yeah. Okay. Well, if that's the case, you got four of the five points. Okay. The only other thing we could do is try to rationalize the denominator. And to do that, I would have to multiply by the conjugate of the bottom. I'd have to multiply by 1 plus root 3 tangent theta. If I did that on bottom, I'd have to do that on top. Okay, now let's see what happens when I do that. Let's do some multiplying. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times root 3 tangent theta is root 3 tangent theta. Done with the 1. Negative root 3 tangent theta times 1 is negative root 3 tangent theta. Negative root 3 tangent theta times root 3 tangent theta would be negative 3 tangent squared theta. which is going to make the denominator, what is that going to be? That's going to be 1 minus 3 tangent squared theta. Now let's see what the numerator is. Square root of 3 times 1 is root 3. Square root of 3 times root 3 tangent theta would be 3 tangent theta. Tangent theta times 1 is tangent theta. Tangent theta times tan root 3 tangent theta is root 3 tangent squared theta. And combining like terms gives me root 3 plus 3 tangent and tangent would give me 4 tangent theta plus root 3 tangent squared theta. So that's the nicest answer where the denominator is rationalized. Okay, okie dokie. You okay with that? Yeah. All right. Let's go way back up here now. Seven, four has got more identities. We're told that cosine of two theta is three fifths, and we're supposed to find sine of theta. Well, so what I would want to do here is look at my list of identities, my double angle identities for cosine. So let me 
put down what we got here. Okay, cosine of 2 theta is 3 fifths. We're looking for sine of theta, and we're in the first quadrant. So, knowing that, again, I told you I'd give you the, the sum identities for this test. I'll also give you the double angles. So you really had three different double angle identities for cosine. You had cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. You had two cosine squared theta minus one. And you had 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So cosine of 2 theta was all three of those things. Natalie, which choice do you think is going to be the easiest to help me figure out sine of theta on this problemo? Um, well, when you messed up with that in the homework, I did the Okay, let's think about that then. You did this. You did this one. Yeah. Okay. Now you could do that. If you do that, you'll figure out cosine. Yeah, that's what we were doing. We had to find cosine and sine. So I would do the bottom one for this problem. The bottom one would be the fastest, wouldn't it? Yeah. So you could get there doing what you did, but the bottom one would be quicker. So, yeah. So here, all we'd have to do is let 3 fifths be equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta, and then we could solve for sine of theta. Good thinking. Way to go. So, let's see here. If I subtract 1, 3 fifths minus 1 or minus 5 fifths would be negative 2 fifths would equal negative 2 sine squared theta. I could divide by negative 2 on both sides. And really, they'd get the negative 2's to cancel on both sides. So I'd have a fifth equal to sine squared theta. So sine of theta is equal to plus or minus, the square root of 1 is 1, over the square root of 5. And rationalize the denominator. So sine of theta is going to be root 5 over 5, and didn't we say we were in quadrant 1? which means it's positive root 5 over 5. So, how are you feeling about things so far? Better or worse? Better. Okay. Let's go way back up here and see if we can find the other assignment. Well, the back half of the assignment, I should say. And, okay, that's a little fuzzy, but, hmm, now you can't even see it. So the first problem on the back says use a half angle identity to find the exact value of 67.5 degrees. Well, to do that, I'm going to have to take 67.5 times 2. Which would be 135. So I'm going to take sine of 135 over 2. And then apply the half angle identity for sine. 
Now, this is another identity that I will give to you. The sine of a over 2, cosine of a over 2, tangent of a over 2. I'll give all those to you. Um, if you look, this is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine a all over 2. So, at 67.5 degrees, sine is going to be positive. It's going to equal the square root of 1 minus cosine of 135 all over 2. Natalie, what's the cosine of 135? Negative square root of 2 over 2. And I ran out of room to put my negative. Maybe I'll put it down there. So I've got 1 minus negative the square root of 2 over 2 over 2. I'll get common denominators in the numerator. And my screen went crazy again. Hmm. Is it going to come in for her? There we go. So, common denominators in the numerator give me a 2 here and a 2 there. So, really, I would have the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 over 2 all over 2 next I could divide by this 2 on bottom which would be the same thing as multiplying by a half which would give me the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 all over 4 which would give me the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 all over 2. You didn't like those back in the day. Are you feeling better about them now? Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay, and then in section, whoopsie, what's going on here? In section 7-5, we talked about inverse circular functions. And I'm having trouble keeping this stuff reeled in here now. What's going on? Do I need to reel in further or do I need to go out? Let me play around with it here. I'm way too far in. There. So what we said about the inverse trig functions is that sine went from negative 90 to 90 or negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So when we say sine and I don't know why that's got a negative 2 there. It should just have a negative 1. Sine inverse of root 2 over 2. We're looking for where sine is root 2 over 2 on the interval from negative 90 to 90. Which would obviously be 45 degrees. Or if you're in radians, pi over 4 radians. Cosine, we said had a range from 0 to 180 or 0 to pi, depending again on whether you're in degrees or radians. So let's say we were in radians. And 
And Natalie, if I ask you for the cosine inverse of negative a half, what would you be thinking of? Which angle would have a cosine of negative a half on the interval from zero to pi radians? Five pi over six would have a cosine of negative root three over two. Two pi over three is correct. Now, just by way of reminder, tangent had the same range as sine, except it wasn't. Uh, it didn't include the two endpoints. So tangent went from negative 90 to positive 90. Or negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, but not equal to. Less than in both cases. And remember I told you I'd give you that chart in your book that told you the ranges for the inverse trig functions. So that will be available to you on your test as well. And we got a problem over here where we have an arc tangent of 1.1 repeating. Well, that's obviously not on the unit circle. So this becomes a calculator problem. I would need to tell you whether I wanted radians or degrees here. Assuming that we were in radians... Then my calculator says we should get right at 0 0.8380 radians. Ah, oh, what happened there? It's not good. Is that what you got? Yeah. Okay. All right, that brings us to the two sections that we did last time, section 7, 6, and 7, 7. And let's kind of review some of the things that we said there. Well, I know what I can do. All I had to do is that right there. That would take care of it. In section 6, we said... First, check to see if you have one or two trig functions. If you have one, try to isolate it. Um, and also, if you have one, uh, see if you have an equation that's quadratic or whether it's linear. So, this one obviously has one. It's sine of x and it's linear. So, we're going to try to get it by itself. So here, sine of x would be equal to 1. And then let's say on this problem that we had an interval from 0 to 360 degrees that we were on for our answers. So, Natalie, where is sine equal to 1 on the interval from 0 to 360? At 90 degrees. Is there anywhere else? You're correct. There is not anywhere else. So there we'd have x equal to 90. Okay, now this next problem has two trig ratios in the problem. And our strategy when that was the case was to set it equal to 0 and then factor. So let's factor here. So if we factor out a tangent squared x... We'll have 2 sine x minus 1 as our other factor. If tangent squared x is equal to 0, we'll figure out the x that makes that true. If 2 sine 
x minus 1 is equal to 0, we'll find out, figure the value of x that makes that true. Okay, so I didn't say here, but, but let's say now, let's say we're looking for all solutions on this problem. So if tangent squared x equals 1, if I square root both sides, that means tangent of x is equal to, I said 1, but I meant 0. It means tangent of x is equal to 0. So Natalie, where on the unit circle is tangent of x equal to 0? At 0, the coordinates are 1 for x and 0 for y, and if I take the y and put it over the x, I do get 0, so that is correct. Is that the only place? No, also 180 degrees. Okay, that's right, 180 degrees. Now, do you remember that with tangent, if I want all solutions, then I'm going to add to that every multiple of 180 past that. Now if it's sine or cosine, you add every multiple of 360. So I'd have 0 plus or minus 180k. But if you think about it, that would just be 180k, where k is an integer. And down here, this would be 180 plus 180K. Well, if you say 180 plus 180K, that's the same thing as saying uh, 180K. You see what I'm getting at? If you take 180 and add multiples of 180 to it, you're going to end up with multiples of 180. And I've already got that over here. So this answer can be summarized with just 180K where K is an integer. Am I making sense there, Natalie? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> then let's go uh, over here then with my sign, which I'm out of room, so I'll go down below here. So if I add 1, I'd have 2 sine X equal to 1. So sine x would be equal to a half. X is equal to, uh, sine is equal to a half on the unit circle at 30 degrees and also at 150 degrees. And to those we add 360K. So 30 plus 360K and 150 plus 360K. And I'll put it like this. And over here I'll put K is an integer. Okay, let's see if I can get this to show up. It's going to be blurry probably if I do. And it's up here. No wonder I can't get it. Get it back in the sunshine a little bit. Okay, so cosine squared x plus 2 cosine x plus 1 equals 0 is our next one. That has only one trig ratio, uh, but it's quadratic in nature. So here we would either... Use the quadratic formula or factor. What do you want to do, Natalie? Do you want to use the quadratic formula or factor? Um, factor. Okay. So this one would factor pretty easily um, because two factors of one that add up to two would just be one and one. So it's going to factor cosine x plus one times cosine x plus one. Equal to zero. 
By the way, let's pretend this time that we're on the interval from 0 to 2 pi for our solutions. I didn't state that earlier. So in either one of these cases, cosine x would be equal to negative 1. And Natalie, where is cosine equal to negative 1 on the interval from 0 to 2 pi? Is that the only place? Yeah. You are correct. So that problem has a solution of pi radians. Do, 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 do. And then on 7, 7, The last section that we did on Friday, we had problems like this where we're solving for x, so what we did here is we divided both sides by 5, so we'd have y over 5 equal to cosine x. And we said to undo a cosine, we would do cosine inverse or arc cosine, whichever you prefer. And so if I take the cosine inverse of both sides here, Uh, <coughs> then I'd have the cosine inverse of y over 5 would equal, and cosine inverse undoes cosine and just leaves me with x. And on that problem, you would have been given that you were on the interval from 0 to 180 because that's what cosine inverse has a domain of. which is similar to this problem. Arc sine x equals arc tangent 3 fourths. Well, to undo an arc sine and get the sine by itself, we would take the sine of both sides. So if you sine arc sine x, you just get x. We would be looking for the sine of the arctangent of x. We've been doing that problem the uh, last few days with triangles. Arctangent here is positive, so that has to put us in the first quadrant. It means the opposite over adjacent has to make a ratio of 3 to 4. We can go get the hypotenuse here. I don't know why that red all of a sudden has gotten hard to see. Maybe because I got it real dark. Yeah, there, if I brighten it up, it's better. And if we use the Pythagorean theorem, 3 squared plus 4 squared is r squared. And if you do the computation there, of course, you're going to get r equal to 5. So the sine of that angle would be opposite over hypotenuse, or three-fifths. So make sure you're golden on those. Okay. Uh, I think we skipped a question on 7.4. Just verify, verify that sine is not a squared. You think we did, you know that we did. <laughs> That's right. Um, yes. I got off my screen and I lost it. Okay, so we've got an identity up here to verify that we haven't verified. All right, well, it's going to be your call, Natalie. You want to start on the left side or the right side? Okay, well, there's really about only one thing to do with the left side, and that's to square sine x plus cosine x. Um, so let's multiply it. Let's foil it out. Sine x plus cosine x times sine x plus cosine x. So 
So here we go. Sine times sine is sine squared x. Sine times cosine is sine x cosine x. Done with the sine. Let's distribute the cosine. Cosine times sine is another sine x cosine x. Cosine times cosine is cosine squared x. Now, what's this? Sine, sine x cosine x and sine x cosine x are alike, so if we combine them, we get 2 sine x cosine x. And then look here, then that leaves me sine squared plus cosine squared. Natalie, what's sine squared plus cosine squared? One. Yep. So the left side boils down to 2 sine x cosine x plus 1. Not much more to do there. What do you want to do on the right side? Um, get rid of the double angle. Well, if you go check your identity for double angle for sine, guess what it's equal to? It's equal to 2 sine x cosine x. So we are finished right there. Both of them end up being equal to 2 sine x cosine x plus 1. Alright, so the assignment written at the bottom of your review sheet is wrong. It's not even the correct page number, so just put a line through that. Here is your actual review assignment for chapter 7. Page 711, 28, 33, 35, 37, 38, 40, 41, 49 through 59 odd, 71 to 95 odd, 102 to 104, 111, 112, 115, 121, 122. That's your review assignment for chapter 11, or 7, I should say.